So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can create a back-to-back -back histogram using Microsoft Excel. The downside of Excel is there's no like automatic back-to-back -back histogram creator that we can use. So instead, we have to be a little bit creative about how we do this. The upside is there's some neat little tricks that we can use in Excel that can create a nice, effective back-to-back -back histogram that we're after. Now, something I've already done in advanced here is I've got some statistics between two, you know, that we're gonna compare so in this case the weight of some football teams um, and I've already completed the frequency table for them so I've decided on bin size and things like that now if you want to know how to do this process I've got some videos I have made on this previously but I'm going to assume for the sake of this that you know how to do this for your own data and you can do you know apply that here what we are going to do though, is we are now going to use this frequency table to create a back-to-back -back histogram. The first thing that I'm gonna do for this is I'm actually gonna create a copy of my frequency table because I wanna keep a copy um, that, you know, I might be able to copy to an, a Word document or wherever I'm gonna use it with these values because we're gonna change some things in this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these cells and we could right click and copy it. Um, you can Command C, which is what I do for Mac or Control C for Windows. And then down here, I'm gonna paste a copy of it. So you can right click paste, you can use Control V or Command V um, and paste a copy of it down here. Now, you don't have to necessarily do this. You could just edit this here, but I wanna keep a copy of the original one for the sake of you know being able to use this later. The reason why we need to change something though is we actually need to change these values so they display on the graph how I want them to. So what we're gonna need to do is we actually need to make them the negative of what they currently are. So this needs to be negative one, negative six, negative 16, negative 12, negative four, so on and so forth. Now I could go and manually type that all in. I mean, that's fine if you wanna do that. But if I had like an absolute ton of these, there's no way that I'd wanna do it, especially since there's a really quick way to get it to do it for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click another cell so let's just click the cell down here type negative one in and press enter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this cell and I'm going to copy it so right click copy or use your shortcuts and I'm going to highlight all of the cells that I want to change. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and we're going to go to paste special. And when you go to paste special, you've got different things that you can do with it. We need to continue to the paste special again down here, which gives us some more options. Now, if you look at this, what we want to do is we want to make this all negative. Now, if we multiplied every one of these by negative one, it would achieve that. And Excel can actually do that for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to paste it as a multiplication. So what this is going to do is it's going to grab whatever was here, multiply all the cells I've highlighted by this number, so by negative one. The thing about that is I also don't want to change its format so I'm going to keep the formatting here as values. So it's only going to worry about changing the values, none of the existing formatting that I've got. So values, multiply, hit OK. And you can see here that everything is the negative of what they were. And now I can just get rid of that. And I've created this to be the negatives of everything. Now, the reason why we need to do this, like I said, is a trick that we're going to use to be able to put this initially in Excel as a column chart. So if we now click and highlight our back-to-back -back histogram that we've changed with the negative values, not our top one, I mean, you could have just done it here, but I just wanted to create a new one. And we go to the insert tab and we go to this column graph section. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the column graph that's um, the stacked bar. So this 2D stacked bar just in here, and we're gonna click on that one. And what it'll do is it'll give us something that looks like this. Now, if I enlarge a little bit just so we can have a look at it, you can see there's some obvious issues and some less obvious issues. The first obvious issue is we've got these negative numbers. We don't want these as negative numbers. It has displayed it back to back, which is fantastic, but we don't want these negative numbers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this axis just in here inside of my graph. And I'm gonna right click and I'm going to format the axis. And what I'll do is over the right here is it'll give me these different options that I can format. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna go and drop down this number section, which gives me an option to try and change this. And what I wanna do is under category, I want to go down to custom. Now, 
You might need to type in manually your own custom code like I've got here. But basically the custom code that you need to have in here is zero, semicolon, zero, semicolon, zero. Now I've had it here before, so that's the reason why it's already here. Um, so if you type this in and hit add, um, what it'll do is it will automatically change these to positive numbers. Okay, so you can see here that code has automatically changed them to the positive of whatever they were. Now that works really nicely for us because that's fixed up how you know our frequency down in here. Okay. The next thing while I'm on these axes intercepts, you can see here that this is my vertical axes labels. They're very difficult to read here. Now I would much rather have them over on the left here. So if I click this one just in here, you can right click and go format axes again. I mean I had it already open. And what we want to do is I'll just get rid of the number. We want to drop down this labels box and we want to have the label position. Um, you can change it to high, which will put it to the right over here. I want it to the left. I think that looks a lot better. So if I go drop down that to low, it'll put it to the left over here, which is much easier for us to read what each one of these are. Now, that's great. We've got our back-to-back -back, um, you know, graph here now. The only thing is, it's not a histogram yet. It's still a column chart. There's these gaps between it. So what we next need to do is we need to select our data, and you might need to right-click it and go um, Format Data Series. I've already got it open. But we want to change this gap width here to 0%. And what that will automatically do for our data is it will have no gaps between it. So suddenly it's already looking like a histogram. Now, because I like to have like little lines that come down here, we can add these to it by clicking on here, going to the format tab at the top here and our shape outline, I'm gonna change this to be black. And you can see here on my orange, it's already done it for us. I'll need to repeat the process on my um, blue. But it's now made some nice, neat little lines here so I can really see what all those individual values are. Ah, now the next thing that we need to add to this is we need to add some titles. So the first thing is I'm going to add a chart title and this might be um, weights of Adelaide versus Port Adelaide. Um, we might just put FC because they're football, football clubs like so. Uh, yeah, that, that looks like a reasonable title. You can title it however you want for your graph. Um, and now we need like a title over here to mention what they are and a title underneath. So if we click on our graph itself, we can go back to chart design and we can add some chart elements. We want some axes titles here. So if I start with a horizontal axes title, this is gonna be my frequency. And then add in a vertical title. This here is going to be the weights, and this was in X kilograms, like that. Okay, and you can see here I've now created a nice little back-to-back um, -back histogram of our, you know, Adelaide Football Club versus, like the weights of Adelaide Football Club or versus our weights of the Port Adelaide Football Club. It's a little bit of a convoluted process. If we wanted to hide this histogram, which is what I said I was originally going to do, we can do that quite easily by doing that. But you can see here with some neat little tricks here that we can really create a nice looking back-to-back -back histogram, which allows us to really effectively compare our sets of data now.